of man signpost outside a French town. That's odd. But we started this tale at the wrong moment. It really began much earlier. It's the story of a very strange little character named Bridie Quilty. village of Ballygarry, deep in the west of Ireland, in the year 1937. Surrender! The shout rang out like the knell of death. Surrender! We knew then the end was come. The English were on the floor below in countless toasts. And there were only the two of us left, myself and Michael O'Callaghan to keep the fair and sacred name of Ireland unbesmirched. Ah, it was a shocking moment right enough, but we didn't stir. I looks at Mick, and Mick looks at me. There was a strange stillness on the day. We crept behind the back counter and waited. Then I heard the boards on the stairs begin to creak, and the head of the first Englishman come round the door. Pain! But me first bullet, I put a parting in his hair that his mother could be proud of. <laughs> then they were on us, up the stairs like rats up a water spout. The fight was on. Ah, it was a grand bit of a fight right enough. I remember one time, I turns round and looks at Mick. Now, I'll never be sure what he was thinking just then. I know there was only one thought in my mind. I was thinking about Cromwell. Oliver, Mr. Cromwell. The and all the death and destruction, the poverty and persecution, the suffering and starvation that he brought on the sacred soil of holy earth. We fought like a dozen men, so we did, myself and Mick, till our last bullet was gone. They took us then and dragged us into the street to join the others. There we were, just a handful of us. Worn, torn and bedraggled. Marching down O'Connell Street, the city we loved burning around us, the crowd silent and sad. And then it was like as if heaven itself would bring hope to us and justice. A miracle happened. A little black-haired angel of a girlene burst through the line of English bayonets. She got a hold of Michael's hand and started to sing. A simple little song it was only, but it might have been the Marshallese. Where's your long battle gone all the same? Down O'Connor's Street it swept, 
like a forest fire. The revolution was born again. They would not die in vain. Night after night, Bridie listened to that same old tale, that same old song of the revolution. With her father's death, she grew up nursing a bitter hatred of everything British, until in the spring of 1944, she came of age. Bridie, why do you suddenly have to confront us with a terrible thing the like of this? Don't you dare bang the table at me, Terence Delaney. I've told you so I have till I'm nearly done with talking. The day I'm 21, I said, and I come by me inheritance, I'll take the 1042 from Glenderry Station I set to travel to Dublin. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not asking you what you're doing. I'm asking you why you're doing it. And why, child, do you have to choose a sinful place to like a Dublin? Uncle Timothy, I'm surprised at you asking a question like that of Danny Quilty's daughter. Timothy Hogan, are you going to sit there and let a scut of a girl defy you? I'm 21. I'm my own mistress. That's an occupation that could change hands overnight. Can it, indeed? I'm well able to look after myself, be it in Dublin or Ballagarry, as Terence here will tell you. Say nothing at all of Mr. McGee there. And Mr. Cloggerty. Well, he knows I can take care of myself. And while we're on the subject... I fancy we're all being rather over-anxious. After all, Bridie has a mind of her own. She appears to have made it up. Thank you, Mr. Ransom. Well, now that's all settled to nobody's satisfaction but me own, I'll be getting me things together. I just want to say how grateful I am to you all for your kindness, and one of these days you'll be as proud of me as you were of me father. Uncle Timothy, are you taking me to the station? Hi, uh... I'd better go and harness the mare, I suppose. Let me take you, Bridie. Ah, so we might as well all... No, no, no. Nobody's to come to the station. Only Uncle Timothy. I don't want me 21st birthday celebrations interrupted. Do you know, it is my belief that it was her father put all that nonsense into her head. Maybe. He had the power of words and a very far-reaching imagination. What are you hinting at, Maggie? I'm hinting at nothing. Only I'm told that of all the men of Ireland that's supposed to have fought in the rise and did fight, the general post office and all the buildings in Dublin put together wouldn't hold them. Not that I'm saying a word against Danny, mind you. Well, indeed, I should hope not. Sure, anyone in Ballygarry can tell you that he set out on his bicycle for Dublin. Aye, he set out all right. But there's a terrible lot of pubs between here and Dublin. <laughs> Hurry now, we'll miss it. Good boy, Uncle Timothy. Good boy. Good boy now. Take care of yourself, child. His hair is going grey, but it looks very nice the way he has it brushed. He's a far away look in his eyes. A poet, maybe? No, he's much too clean. And he puts his trousers under the mattress like Terence Delaney. Hasn't he the lovely nails? 
He's a gentleman, I think. I don't like being alone with a strange man at this time of night. He doesn't look that sort of man, of course, but how can you tell? Mr. McGee didn't look that sort of man. And Mr. Cloverty was a terrible shock to me. Hmm, he's a traveller from abroad. Miller. Miller, that can't be an Irish name. He's English. Of all the compartments on this train, I have to get into one with an Englishman. Now, I might have known it. Will you look at him? Will you look at the cruel set of his jaw? You could mistake him for Cromwell. If he speaks to me, I shall lose my temper. I shall tell him he looks like Cromwell. If he speaks to me... That's all the English ever think about. You say? Oh, I was saying nothing at all. It was just my thoughts expressing themselves in private. I beg your pardon. I feel I should add there are other things we think about. I'd rather not discuss the matter further, if you don't mind. You should visit England one day. You may change your mind. There's no need. I have an aunt there who's told me all about it. She says the upper classes are cringing and always moaning about their troubles, and the lower classes are arrogant and think they own the earth. I thought it was the other way around. My aunt runs a servant's registry office. Ah. There's no awe about it. She hates the whole lot of them, and so do I. My father fought for Ireland against the English in 1916, and if I ever get the chance, I'll do the same. For a subject of a neutral country, aren't you being a little belligerent? There's nothing belligerent about it. It's entirely a question of which side I'm neutral on. Now, if it's all the same to you, I'll be getting on with my sandwiches. That's right. Oh, about time for a tour. I have a terrible crick in the back of my neck. Hey, where are you going with that? I'll see you to a care. Out of the way there, please. Out of the way. Where to, sir? It's a young lady. 224 Beechwood Avenue, is it? I'll give me own instructions if you don't mind, thank you. I'm sorry. Don't mention it. It's very kind of you. Goodbye. Would you take me to the Redmond Portrait Gallery, please? Very good, miss. Bridie Quilty, and I want to see the Deputy Director, Mr. Michael Callahan, if you please. Mr. Callahan doesn't usually see people without an appointment, miss. What would your business be? If you'll just tell him it's Danny Quilty's daughter, that's all. Danny Quilty's daughter. Liam, keep your eye on the till. I'm going to see Mr. Callahan. Can I go inside? A portrait of James Joyce, painted by that well-known Irish artist, Jack Yates. This way, keep close to me now. In you come, me loves, me doves, me darlings, in you come. Where are we now? Ah, yes, the gallery of the famous. Well, let's see if we can find out who they are. Ah, here's our old friend, Sir Roger Casement. 
a lovely man. Knighted by the British for his fight against Belgian tyranny over there in Africa. Hung by the British for his fight against British tyranny here in Ireland. Uh, it's a mad world, me darlings. A mad world. And this is Padraig Pierce, Commandant in Chief of the Republican Forces during the insurrection of 1916. And this is James Connolly, one of the founders of the Citizen Army. And here we have Michael Callaghan, another leader of the insurrection. Mr. Callaghan is now Deputy Director of these galleries. Pass along, please. And here are three famous Irish dramatists, J.M. Singh, Sean O'Casey and George Bernard Shaw. The first being dead and the other two living in England. You asked to see me, young lady. Is it Mr. Callaghan? It is. Oh, me heart's beating like a drum. To think it's really you I'm looking at face to face after all these years. Oh, didn't the man tell you? I'm Danny Quilty's daughter, Bridie. Danny Quilty's daughter, Bridie? But surely you can't have... Oh, now, isn't that stupid of me? How could you know me? I wasn't even born when you and father were together. That's what was puzzling me for the moment. I, uh... Would you like to come into my office? Oh, thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Do you know, Mr. Callahan, the way Father used to talk about you, I feel as if I had known you all my life. Mm. I can just see you both now, waiting behind the back counter. The back counter? He told me that story hundreds of times, and every time he made it live, he was a remarkable storyteller, my father. Remarkable. Well, what suddenly gave you the idea of coming to see me like this? We're not likely to be interrupted, are we? I don't think so. Why? Because what I'm going to tell you, I've never told a living soul. I've been storing it up inside me until I saw you. I want you to get me into the Irish Republican Army. I beg your pardon? I want to join the IRA, please. I want to fight against the English the way yourself and father did. But, my dear child, we're not at war with Britain. Ah, I know they've a separate war on with somebody else and we're neutral, but that's no reason why we shouldn't carry on our own private war that's been going on for the last 700 years. But in 1921, Ireland signed a treaty with England. Well, what has a treaty to do with it? Well, we got a good deal of what we wanted by it. Not everything, mind. Ireland is still partitioned. I'm aware of that. But I believe that when England and Ireland come together and discuss it on a friendly basis, partition won't last very long. A friendly basis? It can't be you saying these things, Mr. Callaghan. Not after the way Father said you talked. After the fight yourself and himself put up. After all the English have done to Ireland since Cromwell. Child of grace, your Cromwell's been dead 300 years. Oh, not in Balagarry. No, I'd forgotten that. You seem to have forgotten a great deal, if I may say so. Perhaps I'm more in contact with reality. Life is real enough in Balagarry. It's also very romantic and very remote. Oh, we have the papers, and we can listen into Radio Aaron. Young lady, I'm going to give you a piece of advice. Times have changed. And believe me, things are best done nowadays by constitutional means. So, forget this wild notion, will you? And go home. You're not going to help me? No. But I've come all this way. I've dreamed of it for years. I'm really very sorry. So that's all you've got to say. You're sorry and do it by constitutional means. You've grown old and soft and comfortable sitting here, Mr. Callan. Go out into that gallery lecture and look at the pictures there. Look at your own picture and ask yourself if you're the same man. Maybe I'm not. We all lose something as we grow older. But if we're very lucky, we gain a little wisdom on the way. All I'm asking you is to think over what I've said. Goodbye.
There's nothing like books for collecting dust. Yes, they seem to be well stocked here. And I've been looking for a life of Curzon for years. I was afraid you wouldn't be here on time. I was told on Wednesday in Lisbon, caught the first plane. You've got your papers for England, I take it? Yes, I have an Argentine passport. I'm going to Britain to buy bulls, apparently. I could have thought of happier excuses. I don't like bulls. Bulls would be the easiest part of your business. Did you ever meet Oscar Price? Yes, in Leipzig last autumn. Did you know that he was in England? No. At the moment, he's awaiting trial in a military prison at a place called Winbridge Vale in the West Country. Bad luck. Well? Price has vital information. We have to know what it is. How? Oh. We must get him out of that prison. I see what you mean about the balls. If we lost 20 lives over this matter, it would be worth it. Was anyone else arrested? I don't know. Then they may be suspect, in which case I don't use them. I'll have to get an entirely new team together. Do you know when Price will be tried? No. Or where? No. Do you know anything that's likely to help us in any way? Nothing, I'm afraid. I said that I found this little guidebook to Winbridge Vale. I'll show you the lie of the land. Thank you. I must call on Tom Clark. I'm sure he'll be delighted to lend us a hand. Good luck. Goodbye. Are these all the German books you've got? I'm afraid we haven't many at the moment, miss. How about this? German without a master in three months. Oh, you haven't got one that'll do it unless. I'm afraid not. Ah, well, maybe I can skip some of it. How much? Three and sixpence. Thank you. Thank you. Are you taking that book, sir? What? Oh, yes. Yeah. Guide to Winbridge Vale. Two shillings, sir, please. But you want some change, sir. stood there with nobody taking any interest in him, except the seagulls. There ain't seagulls. Well, there wasn't any paint on him when the pubs turned out last night. It's after they turn out that things happen. Well, I reckon whoever did it must have been plastered. Well, nobody left here plastered last night. One or two were giving a passable invitation. <laughs> Hello, Bridie. Had your picture taken yet? Get away with you. I'm not competing with Betty Grable. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie's got a pin-up of Betty behind his bed. Hasn't looked at it since Bridie came here. You'd be surprised the difference she's made to Grandfather. He hadn't been on his feet for years, and the other day went right round his room four times. Did he catch her? <laughs> but they're a nice bunch of boys, Grandad. You're too young to have anything to do with soldiers. Well, I only talk to them. You went out with that Sergeant Harris on your last half day. Well, where's the harm in that? He's very shy. They're the worst. Are you there, Bridie? Oh, I'll be with you right away, Mrs. Edwards. I can let you have the room in the front till Saturday, but I may have to change you then. That's all right. Now the uh, registration form, please. Thank you. Dry spell of weather we're having. Very. River's low, they tell me. Is it? Bad for the salmon, I understand. Yes, I suppose so. I thought perhaps you were here for the fishing. Very few people come for anything else. Really? Seems to be quite a pleasant little town. Close to the sea. Lovely country. In fact, everything that goes to make a holiday. Friday, show this gentleman up to number 16, will you? Yes, Mrs. Edwards. This way, sir. Thank you.
Nice young man. I'll have another, Mrs. Edwards. Will you watch your head now? I forgot to tell you about the step. This will be your room. Thank you. Irish, hmm? I've got an Irish grandmother on my father's side. At least half Irish. Indeed. Quaint old place, this. How far is the sea? About a mile and a half. Will there be anything else you require, please? It's me half day. No, I don't think so, thank you. Thank you. Oh, I suppose you wouldn't know anyone who could show me around the town this afternoon, by any chance? I would not. No, I, I only wondered. You're awful quick, aren't you? Sorry, I've been working very closely with the American Army. Cheek of them. Sergeant Harris is here, Bridie. Oh, I'll be with him in a minute. She's just coming. You're early. She's not off till one, you know. You're not going to interfere with love's young dream, are you? Nightmare, you mean. That half of it. You'd like to be in my shoes. As long as I don't have to get behind that moustache. I'm ready, Harry. She's ready, Harry. Have a good time, Sarge. And don't forget that girl you left behind in Luton. Good luck, Sarge. Hello. Hello. May I have another, Mrs. Edwards? Of course. I suppose you wouldn't have such a thing as a small scotch. Certainly. Well, this is an historic town, all right. I see someone's been touching up old Cromwell. Have they found the culprit? I don't think so. Well, whoever it was, they never come from this place. Most of my customers last night were military from the prison. Winmore prison? That's right. Out on the old Roman road, isn't it? I couldn't say. Like you, I'm only a visitor. I thought nobody visited Winbridge except for fishing. Mr. Miller's a cattle breeder over from the Argentine to buy bulls. Seems a long way to travel for a thing like that. Hmm, a long way for the bulls, too. What time is dinner? Supper's at 7.30. Thank you. Naturally, it wasn't in very good condition. We were about ten miles past Derna when it broke down. It was the transport officer's responsibility, really, but he was away sick. So I said to Corporal Groves, that's the ginger-haired fellow I was telling you about, to take a look at the carburetor. It's getting so, yeah. very late, Harry. But you don't have to go in yet, do you? I'm supposed to be in at 10.30. Oh, but you can wait a little. I haven't said half the things I wanted to say. I've been talking army shop to you for the last three hours. I'll kick myself for that when I get back. It's been very interesting, Harriet has indeed, but I simply must go in. Mrs. Edwards will be mad at me. Goodbye now. Extremely sorry I'm so late, Mrs. Edwards. I'd have given you the key if I'd known. I should have told you. I apologize. Can't think where you can find a go at this time of night. A place like Windridge. I had an appointment with a farmer out at Matchcombe. I missed the last bus. Good night and thank you. Good night. I'm here. Quiet. Well? They're taking Price to London on the 9.15 on Tuesday evening. Tuesday? They allow half an hour from the prison to the station, arriving 20 minutes before the train. He wasn't suspicious? No. Asked me what evening I could get off, said he couldn't manage Tuesday, and then told me the rest, a bit here and a bit there. You did better than I expected. Oh, I don't feel as if I've done anything at all. It was all so simple. You showed that young man in number 16 up to his room. I did. What do you make of him? Ah, he's far too sure of himself altogether. If you mean he's the overconfident type, so much the better. Why? Who is he? An intelligence officer. 
I expected one to materialize before they transfer to prisoner like Price. Usual precaution. What makes you think he's that? He booked here until Tuesday, knew where the prisoner was, and then went to the police station. He's an army officer, and he's not interested in fishing, other than conversational then. Oh, I'd never have thought of all that. Do you think will he find out anything? He'll be safer out of the way. You're not going to bump him off? <laughs> My dear girl. No, I shall fall back on a very simple formula. The beautiful decoy. Older than the arts of war, and almost the only feature that hasn't been mechanized. Arrange your next half day for Tuesday and persuade him to take you into the country. Me? Keep him away from the town for a few hours. That'll be quite enough. But how can I possibly keep him away if he knows he has to get back? He's young and impressionable. But I don't like him. It matters little, my dear, what you like or don't like. You really mean you want me to throw myself at him like a... like a... I might have known this had happened. I've half a mind to refuse. I never bargained for anything like this. Let's sit here. Bessie, come here. How far are we from Winbridge? Oh, I don't know. Not far, I'm sure. You seem to have been walking for hours. What's the time? My watch is fast. Uh, it's uh, half six. You must be slow. No, I put it right by the radio. Tell me, what on earth gave you the idea of spending your leave here? Well, I was at Cambridge when the war broke out, cutting short a brilliant scholastic career. Now I'm trying to pick up the threads writing a thesis for my degree in my spare time. At Winbridge? It's about Cromwell. Cromwell? Winbridge is one of the ruins he knocked about a bit. And you think he's a nice subject to spend your time on? Cromwell's a very neglected character. <laughs> Not in Ireland. Ah, Ireland. Oh, don't say, ah, Ireland like that. Do you know what he did to us? I know he was an underrated general. He was a wicked murder and blackguard. I'm only considering him from a military point of view. Who cares about a military point of view? Me. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. My father's great-great-grandfather knew him well. It's getting a bit remote, isn't it? There's nothing remote about it. If you go to my country, you can see what he did to us. And you sit there and make stupid jokes about him. I'm only writing a thesis. I don't care what it is. And I don't care what lies you tell me, as long as you don't pretend you came here to write a lot of nonsense about a black soul like him. We don't seem to be getting along very well, do we? Perhaps we'd better go back. Oh, no. Not yet. It's, it's very early. What? I'm sorry I lost my temper like that. It's just that... Couldn't we forget it, maybe? You know, you're very difficult to understand. Are you sure you're quite straightforward yourself? I suppose it wasn't you who slapped the paint on Cromwell's statue the other night. Now, why would I do a terrible thing like that? Where would I get the paint? If you smiled at me like that, and I were the local paint merchant, I'd give you the run in the shop. I'm sitting on a thistle. I thought I was going to land an intelligence job like yours once, but it never worked out. Depends where you are, of course. Till last month, I was stuck in North Scotland. Absolute dead end. Oh, it couldn't be worse than it is here. Luckily, I managed to wang the transfer. There's much more scope for I am now. I mean, take a little job like this. There's nothing to it, is there? But who knows? It's not what you're doing in the army that counts. It's what you're unnoticed doing. Oh, good evening, Sergeant. Here's the body receipt for your signature, sir. Ah, oh, thank you. I don't know why they always have to fix these jobs at night. Same thought occurred to me, sir. Not exactly a prepossessing figure for an ace spy, is he? I don't know about that, sir. He's a nasty piece of work. We're glad to see the last of him. All correct, Sergeant? All correct, sir. Right, good night, you, Sergeant. Good night, sir. All right, wheel him into the RTO's office, Sergeant. Fall in the new escort. Right turn. Lead on, Corporal.
Late, aren't you, Sergeant? Yes, sir. We were held up by some ACOG, sir. Thought at first it might be dirty work. Can I see your identity card, sir? What was it? Just some fool trying to get too big a cart through too small a gate. Ah, here he is. Good evening. This is not Price. We've just collected him from the van. This is not Price, I tell you. Grab it, Call isn't it one, Sergeant. Find out what's happened. You hold the van. I think it's left. I heard an engine running. You escort. Take over. Right turn. Quick march. in that car beside the driver. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Is there another car about? The RTO is there. Start it up right away. Get on to HQ, tell them that Price has escaped with another man in Rover 14. Get him to throw a cordon around the entire district. Now move, men! <laughs> Track nine, your watch must be slow. Well, you can't have counted right. I counted nine. You thought you did. <laughs> All right, seven, eight, nine, or ten, what does it matter? What do you mean, what does it matter? Well, does it? Doesn't it? My dear, I could stay here forever. You haven't anything else to do? Not a thing, apart from checking up on a gentleman who's not mentioned around here. Are you telling me the truth? Of course, darling. Why? You've got me here under false pretenses. What? Oh, what a fool I've been. Of all the low, mean tricks. This is terrible. I'm going home. What the devil's the matter? What is it? Bridie, come back. Bridie! Hey, wait a minute. Well, how long do you think we've got? Until three in the morning, when they get ferried to London. The only man who might have tumbled was an intelligence officer, but I drew him off with a woman. How oh, they pick these fellas is beyond me. <laughs> I checked up in the town, too. I didn't spend a thing. I suppose I should have been outside when the van arrived. That's what I was thinking. Yes, he won't be the only one. Yes, I had the whole thing sewn up when they caught me. And I still have two if we can get at it. Do you know what it is? No, but they wouldn't have sent for me if it wasn't pretty big. Oh, it's big right enough. Can't you go any faster? The engine's gotten. She won't do more than 40. We'll catch up to them then. No. Yeah. We turn left here somewhere. That must be it. Hello, what's happening there? It's an army truck. Can't turn here. Yeah. 
think I'm out of this. this every, everything is in a, in a notebook in the Isle of Man. Get out. Get out! if you'd gone off the deep end. But carrying on in this way, you might at least give me a clue. Say something. I don't care what it is, anything, but something. It's all very well striding along like a sulky duchess, but I consider I'm the injured party. You can't go on like this, there are limits. I never expect women to behave logically, but this is fantastic. Absolutely, utterly fantastic. What are you doing here? Has he gone? Yes, he's gone. But he's not an intelligence man at all. He's an ordinary English officer on sick leave. I've never been so humiliated in my life. It was a terrible mis... I've been shot. Give me a cigarette. I'll fetch a doctor. Give me a cigarette and keep your voice down. Nothing can save me, short of an operation, I know that. There's a bullet inside me. How do you know? Because it didn't come out. Give me a light. Apart from which they'd never get me on the table in time. Your hand's trembling. Please try to control yourself. I've got a lot to tell you and very little time to say it. Sit down and concentrate. I dislike giving orders like these to a girl of your age, but I have no choice. Neither of you. You understand that. Now listen carefully. Something went wrong. Price is now either dead or in custody. He passed everything on to me. He was originally arrested in the visitor's gallery of the Tinwell Court in the Isle of Man. He managed to hide the notebook with the information in the seating at the end of the second row on the right. Remember that? Second row on the right. You want me to go to the Isle of Man? No. You'll take my place and meet someone on the train which leaves Winbridge at quarter to eight tomorrow morning. You'll pass on what I told you. Well, how will I know him? He'll be in the first class non smoker of the northern section. First class non smoker of the northern section? There's only one such compartment. Well, how will he be dressed? I don't know. He's the next link in the train. You'll ask to have the window halfway down. And whoever it is, of course, it may be a woman. The reply that they've no objection for ten minutes because the carriage is stuffy. You'll both get out at the next station. I ask to have the window halfway down. They reply it'll be all right for ten minutes. Yes. Pick up my coat, will you? In the wallet, you'll find three blank identity cards. You may need them. There's also some money and a photograph. If you get a chance after the war, you might get in touch with a lady. Madame Astonoff, the Hotel Splendide, Bucharest. Tell her I died for Germany. It'll amuse her. I've left the worst till last. The worst? I'm afraid it's a trifle gruesome. But you see, if my body were found here, everyone would be under suspicion. You'd be arrested, perhaps shot. Well, what can I do? Dispose of me. Cigarette's gone out.
Well, what is it now? What's happened to Bridie? I've been waiting here for my airing since seven o'clock. Well, it's a half day off, you know that. And nobody considers me. I promised to play old Brockway a game of backgammon at nine. Well, you'll just have to wait, that's all. The bar's bung full of home guards and I'm run off my feet. run of things. I'm an easygoing type. I said, will you leave me alone? No, I won't. You're not going to get away with this, you know. If nothing else, I owe it to all the other mugs who'll come after me. Look, will you leave me if I promise to see you when I get back? Well, now we're getting somewhere. I'll wait for you in the lounge. How long will you be? I don't know. Well, I shouldn't take the old boy far on a night like this. No, I won't. It's another half mile before I get out of the town. Someone's bound to see before then. It's very dark. Not many people about. I might. I might. Hurry up, Albert. We shan't get the bus. You know what a queue there always is. Always raise filthy beasts, eaters, and go anywhere. What time for quicken, Joe? Yes. Did you put Tiger out, Mum? Oh, never mind, Tiger. Actually, I would like to. Hurry up, Marjorie. Your dad will be waiting. Hello, sweetheart. Taking the old and out for his constitutional. You're from the George, aren't you? That's nothing to do with you. I thought you might fancy the benefit of my company. I'm going your way. I don't want your company. Oh, come on. Go away, will you? Listen, sweetheart, you got me all wrong. Not that sort of fellow. I never take no for an answer. Not this. Thought he was annoying you. He was. How's Mr. Edwards? He's fallen asleep. Between you and me, he's been looking a bit seedy lately. I don't think he'll be with us much longer. Taking him down the cliff road for a bit of sea air. Want to cross over? Yes, I do, please. OK, just a minute. Good night, miss. So you've condescended to come back at last. I've been waiting here for you since half past seven. I promised old Brock we're game of beer. Where are you going? Help me clear these things away. There's a good girl. Ada's rushed off again, as usual. And then take Grandad out. He's getting grouchy. He's been out. Well, he was complaining just now. Oh, I don't know what's come over him lately. He forgets everything. I took him out half an hour ago. Well, I don't know, really. This is too much. Come on, let's get these things out of the way. I think we'll leave the rest till the morning. My feet are killing me. I'm going to bed, too. That's right. Don't mind me. Clean up the bar. Powder your face. Oh, just a minute, Bridie. Down a few stockings. I can wait. Don't be silly, Grandad. She's going to bed. 
about the morning. Lieutenant Baines is leaving first thing. He's catching the eight o'clock. Hey, what's that? Going to bed? What about my airing? No, she's taking you out, Grandad. You know that very well. What are you talking about? I haven't moved from this chair. I've been waiting here hour after hour while she's been out gadding about. What's all the shrugging? What are you two up to? We're not up to anything. She's taken you out half an hour ago. What's the matter with you? Well, there's nothing the matter with me. I ought to know whether I've been out or not. Didn't I call you half an hour ago, Ethel, and again just now? Yes, that's true. Well, you can't have forgotten I pushed you down Cross Street and back. Cross Street? Did I have a chat with old Smart, the butcher, about backing a horse in the Derby next week? Yes, yeah, something like that. I didn't then, see. The Derby was run last week, and old Smart's in bed with pneumonia. Caught you out, haven't I? Well, it must have been somebody else. I wasn't paying much attention. She's lying. She didn't take me out. She hasn't been near me. I may be an old fool, but I'm not that bad. I tell you, she's got some reason for lying like this. Have you ever seen Bessie asleep when she hasn't been out for a walk? Granddad, I simply don't know what's come over you. You'd better call Lieutenant Baden's at seven. Good night, dear. Good night. I can't talk to you, I'm sorry. You've something on your mind, haven't you? Will you let me go to bed, please? Bridie, you came back with an empty chair. I took Grandfather out, you saw me. He got out of the chair and walked in a minute before. Does that satisfy you? Well, whatever the answer... I'd given it to you.
first class non-smoker of the northern section. This is it, girl. Is that seat taken, please? No. Yes, would you like a sandwich? They're not spam. Oh, no thanks. Oh, about that Miss Butler, that nice young man with the sun insurance. Oh, yes. Well, of course, they'd known each other for years. I mean, it was an absolute thing. He'd even bought a house in Kingston. Then he went off and joined the RAF, and she went into the VAD. And now, he's marrying a girl from Rhodesia, and she's going out with a married man from the Ministry of Home Security. Oh, dreadful things war does to people. They would have made such a nice couple, too. And the man she's going out with might have twice her age. An awful shame. Of course, her mother's dreadfully cut up. I was talking to her about it last Sunday after church. Her brother won't speak to her. Home security, says he. Hmm. Fat lot of home security about him. He's a very blunt sort, her brother. Pity he couldn't knock some sense into her. It's a bit late now, of course, after the damage done. I wonder, done. would you mind if I... Now, how can I ask to have the window halfway down, like Mr. Miller said, when it's halfway up already? Could I have the window up, please? Oh. Where was I, dear? Oh, about that man from the Ministry of Home Security. Oh, yes. Of course, Molly wants him to get a divorce. But, of course, I don't think he's the type, dear. Too fond of himself, if you know what I mean. Most men are like that. I've been thinking it over. Would you mind if we had the window halfway down, after all, please? Would you mind? Not at all, young lady. Not at all. Thank you. Isn't anybody going to say anything at all? Nobody going to say they've no objection to the window being down for ten minutes. Oh, come on, somebody, speak, will you? Have you no sense at all? Haven't I done everything Mr. Miller told me I have? What am I going to do now? <laughs> Sully, we must ask you to get out of this station, please. I don't think an explanation will be necessary. You know who we are. Come along, huh? Well, really, I don't know what you're talking about. Still, if you insist. My bag's on the rack there. Uh, be careful, please. There's some eggs in it. I thought I'd give you a shock. I just made it at the Windbridge. Scrambled on at the last moment, came up against a locked door. 
Actually, I wasn't going to leave today, but when I saw you skipping out from my bedroom window, I wondered what the devil was the matter. I couldn't figure it out at all. And of course, after last night, anything might happen, anything at all. You're behaving in the most extraordinary manner. I've never heard anything like it. That old lady was the one I had to meet. She must have known those men were detectives and were going to arrest her. Oh, it's horrible. If only I could keep my knee still and think. I know about something on the Isle of Man and not a living soul to tell it to. Mr. Miller's dead. And even if he weren't, it's very hard to see how I'm helping the cause of Ireland at all at all. I shall go home out of harm's way and nobody yes, will ever... And you were wheeling the body out to bury it. What did you say? I simply said I don't know what you were pushing out in that wheelchair. It might have been a bunch of paint cans or a boyfriend who'd committed suicide in understandable desperation. And you were wheeling his body out to bury it. I see. Do you want to get out of this station? Not particularly. Any station suits me. Well, get back on the train, will you, please? I'm only changing here for Hollyhead. Give me the case. Got your exit permit? No, I never thought of that. You can go one in Liverpool. What are you having, coffee? How long will it take to get a permit? Oh, a couple of days or so. Two coffees, please. Do you want anything to eat? No, thanks. You know, you're a very aggravating man. I don't understand you at all. There are quite a few things about you that don't make sense. I know we've been over it all before. But I feel you've got yourself into a mess of some sort, and I'd like to help you. I know it's nothing to do with me. You can choke me off if you want to. But you must have had a reason for leaving Winbridge in such a hurry this morning. It may not have been anything serious. Probably wasn't. But if there's anything I can do to help. Anything. Hey, Lord, what is it now? That train goes to Manchester. I can change there for Liverpool. But you can get one direct. Let's catch this one, please. If I'm included, I'll catch anything. You've tried every other hotel in Liverpool, I suppose. We may have missed one or two. They always come here as a last resort. 22, 23. No porter, no hot water. Breakfast at eight sharp. Fish cakes. Ship Good night. Good night. I can't think why you're wasting your leave trailing round Liverpool with me. Nineteen round here. Why are you doing it? I suppose you've forgotten what you said to me yesterday out on that hill. Whatever I said, I never meant it seriously. Twenty-one. I might have taken it seriously. You think it's a proper time to talk about things like that? Walking along a dirty hotel corridor looking at numbers on bedroom doors? Perhaps not. Here we are, twenty-two. Unless you prefer twenty-three. It's a matter of indifference to me. Good night. Good night. See you at fish cakes. believed to be concerned in the escape. That's me. I don't like this place. It's the sort of room where murders are committed by commercial men. I shall have another nightmare. I can feel it coming on. It's a comfort to know the lad who's next door. He's an Englishman, but he's nice and solid, and he behaves like a gentleman. 
I did lock the door, didn't I? He's talking nonsense, of course, when he says he might be serious about me. But why shouldn't he be? Terence Delaney was. Why shouldn't he be deeply and beautifully in love with me? What would your father say if he could listen into the awful thoughts you're entertaining? Tomorrow morning, you'll go straight to the passport office and get that permit. In view of large-scale troop movements, danger of spies in error. Danger of spies in error. Could I get a job there? No, I had to come to England. Isn't that just like the English, always looking next door for something wrong and never looking in their own back parlour? So they're going to stop me returning to my native land, are they? All right, all right. I'll go to the Isle of Man, so I will, and I'll find out what's there, and I'll smuggle myself back to Ireland, and I'll take it to the German minister. I'll do something with it. Now calm yourself and go to sleep. How can I go to sleep when I'm in the state I'm in? I'll count sheep going over a stile. One, two, three. Ah, they've all got the face of him next door. I'll turn them into goats. One, two. Oh, I'm in no mood to be counting animals. What's that? Who's there? I said, who's there? What's happening? Oh, David. Bridie, what on earth is the matter? What is it? You're trembling all over. Put that thought up. What was it, Bridie? It's nothing. Nothing at all. Now, pull yourself together, darling. I am together. What are you doing here, anyway? You screamed. I did not. I heard you. It must have been somebody else. Don't stand there gaping at me like that. And tell me the truth. There's nothing to tell you. I'm all right. Good morning. Can you tell me, please, where I catch the boat to the Isle of Man? You get the train to Preston, love, and you change there for Fleetwood. Do you want your bill? Oh, yes, please. Come on. Looks like the track of a wheelchair to me. Simple enough to trace if it is. Can't be many wheelchairs in Winbridge. Not like Bournemouth. Red, blue and green dress. Yes. The fawn coat. Thanks so much. You've got the girl's description? Yes, I have, sir. Mm -hmm. She apparently spent the night before last in a hotel in Liverpool. Uh -huh. Left at six the following day to catch a boat to the Isle of Man. Isle of Man? Get on to the investigation there. It should be easy enough to run to the ground on a small island like that. Yes, sir. Hello? Give me the investigation officer, Isle of Man, will you? Captain Goodhusband, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Good thing it's a small island. No sense in starting before then. You know what these things are. Everything's laid on, old man. All you have to do is to report here. Well, usually it takes about an hour before things get going. Third turning on the left off Strand Street. Well, difficult to make a snap decision on a question like that. I'll ask Spanswick. Spanswick, Marjorie's on the line about the dance tonight. Uh, hold on a minute. She wants to know whether to wear the backless blue or the frontless white. <laughs> really, old man? The blue. Say, Lieutenant Spanswick of Home Investigation sent you. Spanswick favors the blue. Then bring the bottle straight back here. Bye. The net ones. Yes, dear. Very tasty. Very tasty. Colonel Dennington's on the blur from Whitehall. The devil he is. Well, put him through at once and bring your notebook in. Goodbye, dear. Must ring off now. Business, you know. <laughs> I say, I wonder what that young upstart wants. Some flap or other, I'll bet. The last time he got in touch with us was when we were at Lerick to carry on about that submarine crew that escaped. Behaved most unreasonably, I thought. He caught the cook. Well, whoever was to blame, old man, we've done nothing since we've been here. Might be that, of course. Yeah. Hello, sir. Good husband here. 
I want you to arrest a girl of the name of Quilty, Bridie Quilty. She landed on the island from Fleetwood yesterday afternoon. I'll give you her description. Age 21, height 5 foot 4, hair dark brown, eyes blue. Eyes blue, fresh complexion, Irish accent, fawn coat, red, green or blue dress. Got that, darling, Corporal? Roughly. Well, it may take a little longer than that, sir. But you can be quite sure we'll do our best. You'll do a penitite better than that or you'll hear more about it. Now, get on with it. Quite, sir. Quite, sir. I'll ring you back at once. Goodbye, sir. <coughs> Curious man, Colonel Dennington. Difficult to see how we can do better than our best. Expects us to pick up the girl in a matter of hours. Well, your experience should count, old man. It's all very well sitting up there in Whitehall jabbering a lot of instructions. But they won't have to face the problems. Oh, I suppose the best thing to do is to check up all the hotels and boarding houses. Take weeks, old man, especially from a vague description like this. There are packets of girls on this island looking like that and talking with an Irish accent. Not even a squint or a birthmark to jolly things along. Out down there, for instance, crossing the road to the Tinwall Court. She could easily fit the description. Right height, fawn coat, brown hair, typically Manx, typically Irish. We'll meet him at every turn, old man. The year that the laws of the Isle of Man are made, my dear. It's the oldest parliament in the world, is Tinwald. Old Johnny Qualthabir, he's taking a photo for the post-war guidebook. Hey, Johnny? Hmm. Might be in it if you're lucky. Hmm. We don't get many young people here these days. They, they seem to prefer the pictures. Old Tim Kelly there, he, he was a great one for the pictures until they started talking. So now he comes here for his nap. Hmm? Well, hope you enjoy yourself. There's plenty of room in the front row, miss. This will do fine, thank you. No, miss. That seat you're sitting in has a story attached to it. They caught a spy in it a few weeks back. Hasn't been such a rumpus in the house since they put the income tax up from two bob to half a crown. Tim, time you were getting back to the office. Oh, thanks, Simon. Don't move. Stay where you are. Thank you. Thank you. Twenty yards on left, Rue de la Gare. Down steps Café Antoine. What would they be doing with a French town in the Isle of Man? Sure, it doesn't make any sense at all. Four miles north of Ramsey. Thank you. 
behind barbed wire and packed with the British Army. But the book says a French town. Why? The invasion. The invasion. Now, what would they be doing here if they weren't getting ready for the invasion? And where would they be getting ready? Supposing... Ah, it would all fit in. Supposing they'd made up a town, like some town on the French coast, and these notes of Mr. Price's, the advertisement on the wall, the rue de la gare and the steps, down to the Café Antoine. If the Germans had these notes, they could tell which town it was. And when the invasion happened, the Germans would be ready for them, waiting with all their guns to mow them down. That's it. That must be it. What desperate thing are you about, girl? You're holding thousands of lives in your hands. British lives. Irish lives. It's the book of fate itself you're carrying. You'll find the register quite in order, I'm sure. I'm most strict. May we cast an eye on it? Yesterday's arrivals. Just a routine inquiry, you know. I don't recollect the name. From there, down. Any, any single women amongst them? Eighteen, sixty-four, and thirty-three. Miss Baggett says fifteen and seventy-seven count, too. I hope this doesn't mean that someone has escaped from the internment camp and is staying in the hotel. If the food I've had here is nothing to go by, they're more likely to escape from the hotel and beat it to the internment camp. I say, good husband. Yes, old man? That's the girl we saw crossing the road to the Tinwald Court. Oh. When did she arrive? Yesterday afternoon. What's her name? Baines. She's David Baines. Brompton Square, South West 3. Hmm. Married. Pity. I wonder. Thank you. There won't be a fire in the room. I shall have to start one. How long will it take to burn? Five minutes? More? Oh, hurry, lift. Hurry, I've all the troubles of the world on me shoulders. Good evening. May we come in a moment? As I hope we're not frightening you. It's just a little routine check on identity cards, mere formality. Do you mind? Oh, no, of course not. Sorry to bother you and all that. On holiday? Yes. Lovely weather for it. 
Uh, red tape, you know. Very pleasant to tell this. Lovely view. Terrible grub. Mind if I smoke? No. There's a dance here tonight. Is there? Yeah, jolly affairs as a rule. May look in myself later on. Are you finished with that? Staying long, Mrs. Bain. A few days. Will that be all? Yes, that's <laughs> all, thank you. Hello, darling. Holding a reception? Good evening. Good evening. You're, um, her husband. Oh. Oh, just a routine inquiry, you know. Check on identity cards. Really? Well, I, I think that's all, isn't it, Spenswick? Yes. Well, good night, Mrs. Benz. Good night. Good night. Good night. How did you know? Hotel register. Where'd you get this? Do you realize you can go to prison for forging an identity card? What made you do it? It's nothing to do with you. It's my business. It's my name. A small point, perhaps. Oh, isn't it like an Englishman to niggle about a thing like that? Bridie, it's no use behaving like a child. You've committed a very serious offence, and I think I should know what it's all about. Oh, you do? So you think if you stand there and insult me long enough, I'll tell you? Well, I won't. So there's no sense in your staying any longer, is there? Do you hear me? I'm asking you to go, please. Do you want me to ring the bell and have you thrown out? They're very short staff these days. Oh, why are you behaving like this? Can't you see I'm miserable enough already? I don't know why you came here at all. I touched on the reason the other evening. What reason? Something you said that I might have taken seriously. Oh, that? Well, I have. Oh, rubbish. All you've ever taken seriously is yourself and your highfalutin brotherly instincts. They're not brotherly. I've examined them very carefully. I'm in love with you. Do you know what you're saying? It's very simple. Do you know who I am? Huh? I'm a retired spy. I knew that would shock you. I came here to get something for the Germans, but I've changed my mind. Oh, I haven't done any harm, really. I've destroyed everything. It's there in the fireplace in ashes. It was something in a notebook. It just isn't possible. Oh, yes, it is. It's more than possible. It, it just is. But don't worry. It's all over and done with now. I've finished with it forever. Haven't I? But, Bridie, don't you realize the implications? Of course, and I was very worried about them, I can tell. What implications? Well, I'm an army officer. If this is true, I'll have to report it. Can I turn down the bed now? Oh, thank heavens you're not changing. It's always the same on dance nights. I've got enough to do in this job without being kept hovering. I'll be glad when the war's over and I can go over to Canada. That's if he doesn't change his mind. He was still on in last letter. Everything's labor-saving there. Well, don't forget your blackout later. Good night. What was in that notebook? The description of a French town they've built here. Something to do with the invasion, I think. You read it? Some of it. But I've burnt it now. I haven't really done any harm, David, and what I did I've undone, haven't I? Supposing the Germans got hold of you? How could they? Someone was in your room in Liverpool. They'll find you. Do you think I'd tell them? They'd get it out of you. They wouldn't. I swear they wouldn't. That's what you think. If this is what it sounds like, it's dynamite. So long as you're running around, the whole thing may be in danger. You must see that. If I hand you over, I'm practically signing your death warrant. But what else? What alternative is there? If only you told me earlier, I might have... Oh, what's the good of talking about it now? It's gone too far. Why the devil couldn't you... Take it. 
fellow over there doesn't own in. Wondered if I'd see you. A bit crowded, isn't it? I say, where's your husband? He's not my husband. Not? Oh, oh dear. Oh, oh I see. Your friend like one too, sir. Oh, oh yes, yes, thank you. thank you. Always up to some new stunt for raising the wind. May I? The next dance will be a change partner's dance. I wanted to see Yes, I quite understand how these things are. 211 adds up to four. My lucky number. Come on, let's dance. Oh, please. Please, there's something... Something I... on your mind, eh? Oh, something on mine, too. Let's forget it. Let's forget dull care and dance the flaming hours away with flying feet. <laughs> Not the mine are exactly flying, you know. <laughs> Would you like a ticket for the raffle? Devil of a day. Duty's all very well, but it can be carried too far. Man must have some relaxation. I want to talk to you. There's something I must tell you. I can't very well tell you. I'll hear the word you're saying. You wonderfully light on your feet, my dear. Gossamer. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Gossamer. Oh, please listen to me. It's terribly important. I'm the girl you're looking for. Marjorie. Bad show, that. A friend of mine. Asked her to meet me and forgot all about it. Thoughtless of me, too. Works in the wine stores. Oh, please, I can't go on like this. I've come down here to yes, see you yes, because yes. I want to tell you that I... Remember that girl in room 47? You see her now? Yeah, rather. Just been dancing with her. Her identity card's a fake, old man. <laughs> I don't think that remark terribly amusing, Lieutenant Spenswick. There's no such person as Mrs. David Bain, sir. How do you know? I've just checked up. No such number, no such address. She travelled on the right boat and answers the right description. It's a million to one she's the right girl. Where is she now? Oh, dancing with some type. I can't believe it. A lovely girl like that. What are we going to do? Grab her when she comes off the floor, of course. Ladies and gentlemen, here are the winning numbers of the Army Comforts Raffle. Now, will everybody gather round, please? We'll have to wait till this breaks up. Number 211 wins the first prize. Number 211. You're unlucky day, old man. Just missed the prize by one. Yes, I, uh, I bought her a ticket, too. What number? 211. Has anybody got 211? She's won, then. Curious situation. Will number 211 please come up and receive the first prize of 10 war saving certificates? 211. Oh, come on, 211. I don't like the look of this. Have you got men posted? Hennessy and James are in the lounge. What the devil's the use of that? Haven't you got any common sense? Are you accusing me of incompetence? I don't feel I'm accusing you of nothing. But if the cap fits. In your case, old man, it looks like being a bowler hat. Will the holder of ticket number 211 please raise their hand? 211. Has anybody got 211? Up there at the bar, perhaps. 211. 211. change. Let's have the truth. Listen, Steve, the kid's not talking. That's obvious. But he may, with a little persuasion. If he knows anything. 
time enough to find out if the submarine's not picking us up till Wednesday. One passenger's enough. We've got to get across Half Island to the Derry Coast. Might be worthwhile to good contact pass with the girl. I'll handle this my own way. Are we playing poker or aren't we? Somebody is. But I'm not sure it's us. Make of it, Michael. Smugglers, maybe. Or German spies. I read in the English newspapers that they're swarming all over Ireland. It's almost our biggest national industry, man. Well, whoever they are, you'd better ring up Guard Crowley at the police station. Aye. Tell them they're coming ashore at Dunrockin. They likely as not take the road past Sean Murphy's to the railway station. He'll head them off there if he hurries. Good morning, Dudgood. You didn't by any chance see four strange men in the guddle round here? No. They landed at Rockland Bay an hour ago. My Greg had spotted them from Athcar Point. They didn't put much stock in it myself till I found Dundalk. Terribly excited they were. Tell me what time's the next train? About half four. Uh, maybe they'll turn up for it. I'll be back. Tell me what Sean Murphy's cap doing outside? I don't know. We thought he was in Draga. Well, goodbye now. Is he gone yet? Going. Lucky I spotted him. Puts paid to us catching the 4.30, though. Yes. Looks like we're stuck with Sean Murphy's cab. <laughs> Where do you think you're taking us now? Shut up. What's the trouble? Can't we go any faster? Something in front. Well, give him a shout. Ask him to pull in. It's a funeral. No room to pass. Funeral. All right, all right. Turn off at the next by road. What is it? It's the police. They've stopped the procession. Carry on. Carry on. We're off again. They must have asked if we'd passed. Good thing we hadn't. We'd better hang on to this show for a while. It has its point.
Now what's happened? But they've stopped for a drink. I could do with one. They're taking the disease back to Down Patrick, where she was born, sir. The permits are now, but... As me poor wee sister Bridgie, our good poor soul, never did any harm to anyone. From Down Patrick, eh? Aye, that's the truth. Take Mr. She and bury Mr. She in the little graveyard behind the hill. Tell me, do you happen to know Robert Moore from Down Patrick? Is it the hard Bob? Oh, sure, you no. Know. Isn't Bob's uncle a first cousin of me daughter-in-law's? I knew him in 32 and he was at the bacon curing. You know there's a travel bond the other side the border. Oh, I know that, but I've permits to cover the whole party. Do you want to see them? Oh, it doesn't concern us. But you better get a move on if you want to be in Down Patrick before nightfall. Aye, well, I'll remember you to Bob, so I will. What's the explanation of that? That was Miss Sister Bridges' last wish to be buried with her alarm clock. Open it up. The devil take if you lay a finger on it. Have you no respect for the dead? It's nothing short of blasphemy and sacrilege. It's a wicked crime you'd be perpetrating. Oh, me poor Bridgie. Beat it up. Hop it, lads. We're rumbled. What's going on? Fight of some sort. We can't afford to get mixed up in anything. No. Get out of it. Quick. The daughter Biddy's in the last carriage. Pick her up and I'll meet you at Greg's farm. <laughs> Serious daughter Biddy, you're to come with me. Do you think? No idea. Seems to be the only hotel in the place. I'll ask them the way to the border. The border? What are you going to do with me, David? Take you across into Northern Ireland. And hand me over? I must, Bridie. You're not going to take me out of a neutral country where I belong so that I can be tried and shot? It's my duty. It's your stiff-necked British obstinacy. That's what it is. Look here, we're fighting a war. At the moment, you're endangering part of it. Can't you see? You're a menace that's got to be neutralized. I was born neutralized. Well, since you seem to have made up your mind, why don't you go in and ask? Go on, tap on the hatch. Hmm? That's right. Yes, sir. Now, what can I do for you? Ask him. Have you any whiskey? No spirits. Nothing but draft beer. All right, two halves. Two half pints. I thought you were going to ask him the way to the board. I am. Thanks. How far is it to the nearest police station? Oh, about a mile and a half up the road. Where's your telephone? In the back parlor. Why? David. I want you to telephone them. It's important, and I can't leave this young lady. Oh, you can't, can't you? Tell them she's the one they're looking for. And she's here waiting for them. Her name's Bridie Quilty. Bridie Quilty? Well, they know it. By now, they will. I said it's important. Right. 
Doctor, you know what you're doing. Of course, behaving like a gibbering idiot. When the guards get here, they'll intern me. Exactly. Here in Aero, where you'll be safe and can't do any harm. But what about you? I'll say goodbye when they get here. But those two officers in the Isle of Man, they know you've been concerned with... with me. Yes? The war officer's going to object, isn't it? Oh, no, no. I'll probably get a gong for it. You'll be shot. Oh, hardly. Merely cashiered, drummed out and imprisoned in the tower. Why are you doing this? I've probably gone mad. Well, I'm not going to let you. You're not going to have any choice. The wrong way. He'll be here any time now. We're speaking to Mickey Doyle himself. He's the sergeant, you know. Good. And what he says, she must be a desperate character altogether. Yes, she is, very. Thank you. That'll be one and eight, them, sir. She won and sixpence for the beers and took them for the telephone. Yes. Right. You wouldn't be wanting any help there, would you? No, go away. David. Yes? I am sorry. You'd much better never have met me. I'd do the same again. Couldn't you let yourself get in turned with me, maybe? No. No. Slater. Slant you. How much is draft beer in error? Fourpence a half point for this stuff. They charge me double, one and six. Then he cheated you. And no spirits. Does it matter at a time like this? Bridie, look at that girl. She's chewing gum. Hiya, Slick Check. What's cooking? Oh, let me off, Al. We're in Northern Ireland. Say, what's been giving you, kid? He won't let me go till nine, honey. We're gonna be mighty late for that dance. Oh, that'll be okay. They don't start till late over the other side. Yeah, but by the time we get now, there... Now, listen to me, high puggies. Just let me get my handbag and we'll be south of that little old border in ten minutes. You're right on the ball, ain't you, babe? You're damn tootin'. No kidding. No kidding. Gee, you're swell. I'll say. David, that means he must have telephoned the British police. The Ulster Constabulary. You've heard that they said it's only ten minutes' walk. If they can slip over for a dance, there's nothing to stop us. No, David. It seems like heaven's will that we'll be caught, and here I'll stay. But we can be over the border in ten. It's no use telling me I've made up my mind, and all the powers on earth won't make me change it. Bridie, for heaven's sake, be sensible. Now sit down and take it easy. They'll be here any minute. And we'll meet them together, tell them the truth, and hope for the best. There's nothing they can do to you now, so there's no reason why you shouldn't be as happy as I feel now that me mind's at peace for a change. Right, dear. Give me your hand, David. There. Now we'll sit here quietly and enjoy the last few minutes we have together. Just the two of us. Alone. Ah, excuse me. This is the BBC Home Service. Here is the news read by John Snag. D-Day has come. Early this morning, the Allies began the assault on the northwest corner of Hitler's European it fortress. It started. Friday. Then there's no reason. No, not now. The border. The first official news came shortly after half past nine this morning, when Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force. Up here. Mind how you go, sugar. Oh, there she goes. All right. Yes. Where is she? She didn't snow. A little later, General Montgomery. Army Group. 640 guns of the Allied navies. That's funny, she was here a minute ago. Goodbye. Goodbye, David. <laughs> Thank you.
Maybe she's in the lounge, lounge in the back parlor. Go with him to the back parlor, Pat. About 4,000 ships. Gentlemen, leave this to me. Open this door at once. Come out of it. We stopped here instead of going on to Hereford. Did you notice my hand trembling when I read Mr. and Mrs. Baines? <laughs> I'll sit down, put the car away. Bridie, what the devil are you up to? How dare you do a thing like this to me? I won't stop in this place, so I won't. Not if the sky itself were to fall down on the top of me head, I won't stop in it. <laughs> 